the unmatchable atmosphere of a big fight night being stoked to fever pitch. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the most famous venue in the world for sports and entertainment, the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing in association with TGB Promotions and AJ Boxing present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Streamed live on DAZN and broadcast by Sky Sports Box Office to the United Kingdom. Sponsored by William Hill, Tecate, official beer of boxing, Hennessy, Never Stop, Never Settle, StubHub, and JD Sports. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, along with the WBO. President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, the WBA, President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the IBF, President Daryl Peoples, and the IBO, President Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring should this fight go the distance, Michael Alexander, Julie Letterman, and Pasquale Pacropio. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, world championship veteran, Michael Griffin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the officials are at ringside and they are ready. The fighters are in their corners and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance here at the sold out Madison Square Garden, New York City, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer Manny Robles. He's wearing white with gold and stands six feet two, officially weighing in at 268 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 32 victories, 21 wins by knockout. He has only one defeat and that was a split decision loss from Imperial, California, and fighting for his Mexican heritage, Edelos Poros Mexicanos, the former undefeated NABF heavyweight champion, the challenger, Andy Destroyer Ruiz Jr. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Rob McCracken, wearing white with black, standing six feet six and weighing in officially a 247.8 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold, he now has a perfect professional record. 22 fights, 22 victories, 21 wins by knockout. From London, England, the heavyweight fighting pride of the United Kingdom, the reigning, defending, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua. Pound for pound, matching any of the ovations he's enjoyed, enjoyed back in the UK. Now having that flowing white gown removed by his trainer, Robert McCracken. And just the last of the formalities remain to be uttered by the referee, oh, Mike Griffin, in the centre of the ring. Gentlemen, you both receive my instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands, I want you to protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves now, men, you're boxing at the bell. God bless you both. Well, some sports, some venues are forever linked. And Anthony Joshua is acutely aware of the history of this sport and this division and the relationship between boxing and Madison Square Garden. And so he makes his American debut, his first fight outside of Britain as a professional. It's fight night, it's heavyweight fight night here at the Garden, Madison Square Garden for Anthony Joshua following a long line 
of big heavyweight names and the bell sounds. We're underway after months of waiting. Joshua versus Andy Ruiz for three versions of the world heavyweight title. The first punch is a left hand to the body from Ruiz and the flab around his waist shakes as he throws that punch. Another jab, a second jab from Andy Ruiz. A tentative jab from Anthony Joshua. So much the taller. Clear to see and a couple of left hooks from Andy Ruiz as Joshua tries to get in close. Joshua flicking out the left hand, almost pawing with that left hand, using it as a rangefinder for the overhand right to follow. They're in the centre of the ring. A lovely shot to the body from Joshua. He bent his knees and fired in a left jab to the ample abdomen of Andy Ruiz, who's got those golden gloves of his held high, wearing white shorts with gold trims. Joshua, white shorts with black trims and a lovely left hook to the chin from Andy Ruiz as Joshua tried to open up in the centre of the ring. Joshua just dropping that left hand around by the waist and then throws a jab, come hook. Then a jab, flicks out, taken well on the gloves by Ruiz, who doesn't look to be at all overawed at this stage as we move into the second minute of the opening round. Joshua bouncing up on his toes with the left hand held down low. He flicks out a jab, it lands flush on the nose of Ruiz, who stands his ground pretty much in the centre of the ring. He's the man on the front foot and it's Joshua voluntarily going on to the back foot, fast side of the ring, flicks out a jab, he's got the edge in speed, we're seeing that already, will he have the edge in power, Ruiz goes forward with a couple of jabs, but he's stopped in his tracks by a solid left hand from Joshua, who looks as though he's beginning to get the timing of that left hand in the early stages of the opening round, we're into the second half, and Ruiz is bravely throwing that jab upwards towards the chin of Joshua, there's a huge reach and height disadvantage for Ruiz and he's got to try and find a way to roll his way in to slip and to slide and to make Joshua miss with that lead left hand a jab from Ruiz taken on the forearms by Joshua who moves around the outer edges of the ring closer to the ropes than Ruiz who's been on the front foot for most of the first couple of minutes of the round 50 seconds to go in this opening round fairly quiet so far nothing of any real significance has landed a lovely jab from Joshua but Ruiz takes it and throws a left hook of his own Joshua steps in with a left hook it was his first shot a lead shot then he flicks out the left hand jab he tries a lead off left hook does Joshua just looks slightly uncomfortable didn't quite time it right but Ruiz wasn't in position to throw a solid counter but the Mexican is standing his ground, holding his ground and more than holding his own in the first two minutes and 40 seconds of the round. 20 seconds to go in the opening round and Ruiz is backing Joshua up. Joshua happy to go on to that back foot, flicks out the jab, holds the right hand high and the left hand low is Joshua. Flicks out the jab towards the body of Ruiz. He's probably done enough with the left hand. Exchange of jabs from both men. You see each of their heads rocked back by the power of the punch from each man the left hand shot as the bell sounds at the end of the round and a, a tap on the midriff of Joshua from Andy Ruiz David Hay your thoughts I was very very impressed with Andy Ruiz there he didn't look overawed by the situation he didn't look outgunned you know he was that one creeping forward he landed a couple of cheeky little shots on Andy Joshua Andy Joshua landed a nice jab at the end of the round um, Andy Ruiz landed a, a, a nice little left hook at the beginning it was kind of an even round it sounds crazy I wasn't expecting Andy Ruiz to be in the fight like it was in that first round. I gave that an even round. I, I gave the round uh, Ruiz actually. Um, I think Joshua was just having a look, but it shows you you can never judge a book by its cover. It's almost comical watching these two together in the ring. But Ruiz won that round and he just proved he can fight. Josh is only having a look though. And I tell you what, when he let his hands go those two or three occasions, I know he missed with those shots, but they were fast, like I've been warning you. Those hands are fast. I love that round. I thought it was a terrific fun round. This might be more of a test than many had laughed at beforehand. Andy Ruiz takes a jab on the chin at the beginning of the round, but opens up with a couple of clubbing right hands of his own, trying to unsettle Joshua, trying to make an advantage of that supposed disadvantage. He throws a big hand out, overhand right, and Anthony Joshua is forced to hold on. It just gets uncomfortable, and it looks as though there might be a mark on the left eye of Anthony Joshua. We'll wait till he turns around and faces us. Good overhand right from Andy Ruiz here. He's taking it to Joshua. Joshua steps in. Just got set and shaped to throw a right hand, but pulled it back when he saw that he'd be out of range. Ruiz steps off, throws a jab. That lands, but the overhand right that followed it didn't, as Joshua had danced away around to his right and away from danger. 45 seconds gone in round two, and it's been a lively start again by Ruiz. Joshua bends his knees, throws a jab towards the body of Ruiz. It didn't quite meet the target. He didn't quite get his range and his 
distance quite right on that occasion did Joshua he's still got that left hand held very low he flicks it out Viper style but Ruiz sees it coming and just casually steps back out of range and then takes his ground again in the centre of the ring an exchange of jabs close to the far side of the ring now Joshua moves around towards the left hand side and then switches again lateral movement left to right and then vice versa jabs from Ruiz taken on the forearms by Joshua as we head towards the second half of the second round and a bright start by Andy Ruiz but Anthony Joshua has been holding him off since then flicking out that left hand tries a left hook does Joshua it landed shy of the target it's a lead left hook he's tried it three or four times so far over the course of the first one and a half rounds but it hasn't quite got the timing right just yet we saw him trying that in training when we went to see him in Sheffield the home of the Great Britain Olympic squad that lead left hook, but it hasn't really come off so far. He's pouring out with a jab, using it almost as a range finder. Fainted to throw a jab towards the, the torso area, as did Ruiz. He fires in a jab towards the abdomen of Joshua. Didn't quite land with the ferocity that he expected and that he intended. Ruiz in the centre of the ring, flicks out a jab, takes a sharp right hand over the top from Joshua and a left hook from Joshua. The two best punches of the fight so far with 45 seconds to go in round two. A left hook and then a right hand from Joshua. Brilliant power and the sweat flew from the head of Ruiz as those shots landed from Joshua who backs off almost Callum Smith style here waiting for those opportunities to power in those shots over the top of the jab of Ruiz. There is room over the top because he's so much shorter. Joshua now beginning to find his range and his way round as he flicks out a jab again towards the chest of Ruiz. Ruiz still going after him. That Mexican's face is becoming ever more reddened. He's got fairly prominent cheekbones anyway. Throws in two jabs, does Ruiz, but he takes a stronger jab from Joshua. He's got his back to the ropes close to us at ringside here at Madison Square Garden. Joshua defending three versions of the World Heavyweight Championship as the bell sounds at the end of round two. Carl Frampton. That was a battle round for Anthony Joshua. Um, Ruiz though, he's got hit a few clean shots and he fired back straight away. He's a brave fighter and obviously he's got a good chin. Anthony Joshua still moving backwards, but a bit of a battle round for him. Nice score to him. Well, you know what? If we were wondering what AJ was going to do, if we were wondering if AJ was going to power through him or pick his punches, I think we've seen it. I think AJ's seen enough with those left hooks whistling past his chops to think, you know what? I can do a great job in five or six rounds. Why take a single risk early in the fight? I think Ruiz packs a, a, a serious shot in his, in his left hand. He, lo he looks like that, and Andy Joshua looks a bit tentative. You know, he, he, I've seen him in the past just steamroll people. This, he, he's treating Andy Ruiz with the respect he's due because some of these quick counter left hooks and overhand right seems to be just whistling past the, the, the chin of Andy Joshua, and he doesn't, he doesn't want any part of it. Not at this early stage, anyway. Bell sounds for the third round, the World Heavyweight Championship live on BBC Five Live, continuing a great weekend of sport on the station. Ruiz steps forward again, as he's done for the previous two rounds, and likewise, Joshua is content to step off. Joshua tries again that lead left hook. He tried to counter Ruiz on the way in, but it didn't quite work again, as it hasn't done over the course of the first two rounds. The better jab to the body, though, from Joshua, and that has been a shot that's worked for him so far. That punch has been pretty much one of the better punches he's thrown over the course of the first six minutes. We've had half a minute in this, the third round, and I think Ruiz has already surprised many with the way he's stayed in the fight. But a right hand from Joshua gets through, a right uppercut and a left hook, and Ruiz is down for the first time in his professional career. A brilliant combination of right hand and then a left hook. The referee gets to the mandatory eight count. Ruiz is up on his feet, but can he survive two minutes of the third round now? Down for the first time in his career. Right hand from Joshua, but Joshua takes a shot back from Ruiz. Ruiz is fighting back. Joshua lands a right hand again. Another left hook, and Joshua is badly shaken. He goes down. Joshua is down. Seconds after Flory Ruiz himself. And do we have Joshua versus Klitschko all over again? Halfway through round number three. Sensational heavyweight boxing at the Garden. And Ruiz now senses a colossal upset. Joshua is on the most rubbery legs. Can he survive? A minute and 20 seconds to go. Joshua is holding on desperately now. Having floored Ruiz, he got too complacent. 
and went down himself. The two men now in a close quarter clinch with a minute to go in the third round. This could go either way and very soon. And now Ruiz opens up a four-punch combination, but then muffled by Joshua. Joshua tries a right hand, takes another left hook. He can't quite time it. Joshua's senses are completely scrambled. He draws breath. Let's go with a huge lung full of breath, does Joshua. He knows this is the most difficult time of his career so far. This is a much greater crisis than he faced against Vladimir Klitschko. 25 seconds to go in round three. Joshua, close to his own corner, leans in with a jab to the body now. Ruiz, is he also getting tired after the exertions of this round? A sensational round of heavyweight boxing. Ruiz goes forward again and opens up and he catches Joshua with a right hand. Joshua holds on. This could be close to the finish. Joshua goes down again for the second time in the round at the end of the third round. Will he rise to his feet? He's on unsteady legs again. He rolls back. Will the referee allow him to continue? As Jack Reese did with Tyson Fury. The referee is allowing Joshua back. Anthony Joshua saved by the bell. What a run! He is wobbling back to his corner. One of the great, great rounds in the history of heavyweight boxing. One of the great, great rounds we've seen here in Madison Square Garden. Safe by the round and the referee. Let's get that straight with Fair here at ringside. When he went down that second time, Mike, it was from a left look and a right cross, and he went down on his knees, and I honestly thought he couldn't do it. And I'm not going to be in an after time, and we've said it all week. He's had a cold for the last 10 days, and he looks like a beaten, he looks like a shot man, Dave. He's fighting a man who's had six weeks' notice for this fight and um, a guy who nobody believed had the firepower to cause such. Uh, and uh, this will be one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. This will be like George Foreman beating Mora. This is insane. Bell sounds then for round number four. Ruiz goes straight on the front foot. How much has Joshua got left? Were those 60 seconds anywhere near enough for him to regroup? and to somehow rediscover those senses that were splattered all over the Madison Square Garden canvas by two knockdowns in that third round. We're into the fourth round. A right hand from Joshua Lance. Can the crowd get behind him here? Can he rally? Is Ruiz a late substitute, ready to tire after all that he put into that third round? This still could go either way. The next punch could be the last. A left up from Joshua. But Ruiz takes it and comes straight back into the fray. 50 seconds gone in round number four. And every second that passes is for the benefit of Anthony Joshua. He's trying to hold his ground. He just shaped to throw a jab to the body. A shot that's been so successful for him here. But is he one punch away from losing three versions of the World Heavyweight Championship here? Ruiz steps forward. Again, flicks out a jab. There wasn't any real meaning or venom behind that jab. He might be waiting for a single pot shot. Jab to the body from Ruiz again. Joshua content to just walk away, to stay out of trouble at this stage, the halfway stage of round number four. Who could have predicted such drama here? There were laughs when some saw the tattoo that says victorious across the upper part of the back of Andy Ruiz from shoulder to shoulder. But he was so close to being victorious at the end of that third round. He jumps forward again with a left right. This time Joshua has got enough about him, enough wits left to step back out of range. The left hand held low by Joshua once again. He too is waiting to ping in a big right hand over the top or maybe a left hook. An exchange of jabs. Both men land. Ruiz goes towards the torso area. We're into the final minute of round number four here. Can Anthony Joshua pull this one out of the fire? He leans in towards the body of Ruiz. Lands a solid shot towards that flabby belly that so many have laughed at. They won't be laughing anymore, whatever the result of this fight. And we simply have no idea how this might end. With just over 30 seconds to go, both of them are so apprehensive. Both of them 
are so tentative here because both of them know what the other man carries in those gloves. And it's very close to boxing's version of dynamite. 20 seconds to go. Jab to the body from Ruiz in what's been a quieter round. Most of the rounds in heavyweight history have been quieter than that third one as Ruiz gets set, sways from the waist, just thinks about his next attack, lands a jab, overhand right from Joshua, draws applause from the crowd, but it collided mainly with the shoulder of the Mexican-American, who considers himself Mexican and wants to be the first Mexican heavyweight championship of the world. He was maybe one punch away, and let's head over to Anthony Joshua's corner and hear what Robert McCracken, his trainer, has to say. You're hurting me, you lost in any court, you. Put your legs out. All you've got to do is get your composure and box now. OK, listen, listen to me. You can do this, you get the jab working. So, Carl, right Carl Frampton, Robert McCracken saying, get your composure and box. That's what he needs to do. I was just trying to figure out how to score the third round. I'm not even quite sure how to score it. two knockdowns, I believe, so that was a 10-7 round, you'd give that. Oh, but no, he, he knocked him down as well. But there was also a knockdown, so I guess it's 9-7. Okay. You know, it was, uh, you know I, I've never seen Anthony Joshua in this type of a situation. Even in the Klitschko fight, he was hurt. But the one thing that did go through my mind was when Vladimir Klitschko had Joshua on the floor, he didn't jump on him. And uh, and the power of recuperation in the young legs of Andy Joshua were there. I hope Andy Ruiz doesn't regret not jumping all over AJ after that knockdown. Well, he might do. Let's see. Into the fifth round. A sensational evening here at Madison Square Garden. No wonder it's called the mecca of international boxing. So many great nights down the years, and this could be one to be added to the illustrious list. Can Joshua now find something special to turn this his way, to hang on to those three versions of the world heavyweight title that were slipping from his grasp at the end of that third round? Knocked down twice in the third round, if you're just joining us, after he had floored Andy Ruiz for the Mexicans' first knockdown in his professional career. They're in the centre of the ring. Again, the work is very tentative. They're throwing punches pretty much at each other's gloves at this stage. Joshua with the left hand held low, takes a jab to the torso from Ruiz and it just struck Joshua off balance momentarily in the centre of the ring. What drama here at Madison Square Garden so far. Joshua just wipes some sweat from his nose, looked at it tentatively as if he thought there might be some blood there. He moves off on the left-hand side of the ring as we look on. Right hand, left hook from Ruiz. Joshua avoids them. Makes the Mexican miss, but wasn't close enough, sharp enough. Maybe didn't have the mind to throw a counter. Now Joshua gets through with a sharp right hand, but worryingly for him, Ruiz was able to take it and fired back. The punch from the Mexican missed, but he was sharp enough to fire back, having taken a pretty heavy right hand. And it's still Ruiz pretty much on the front foot. Joshua on the back foot, neutral corner, just to our right here as we look on at ringside. Halfway stage of round number five of a fight of unforgettable drama already. Two quiet rounds have followed that sensational third round. Still the sense that this could go either way. The longer it goes, you'd have to fancy Joshua because of his class and because of his pedigree and because of the shape, the sheer shape of Ruiz, who started so well against Joseph Parker in his only other world title fight and then faded in the middle rounds. And now he gets set to throw a right hand, shakes the right hand as Ruiz, but Joshua had gone, and so he thought better about throwing that particular punch and potentially leaving himself open to a counter. Exchange of jabs again from two men, and they land with pretty much the same power. Right hand to the body this time from Joshua. Apart from the jab, lovely left hook from Joshua, and Ruiz has to back up. Ruiz shakes his head as if to say it didn't hurt. It certainly did, because we saw here the legs of the Mexican stiffen. But again, he's taken it, and he's standing his ground here. Such a warrior is Ruiz, so determined to become Mexico's first ever world heavyweight champion. Joshua on the back foot, flicks out a jab, does Ruiz. It lands just beneath the chin of Joshua. Ruiz owns up with the right hand, left hook. Joshua gets the hands up in time to deflect those punches away from the danger areas of the face, the temple and the chin. Ten seconds to go. You hear the timekeeper wrapping the sticks on the canvas. That's a warning to the corners and the fighters. Overhand right from Ruiz. Just grazes the left-hand side of the head of Joshua at the end of this, the fifth round. Steve Bunce, how did you see that one? Well, that was a Joshua round, but I'll tell you what, Mike. I've seen him cautious before. I've seen him box sensibly. We saw it against Parker. He is boxing here very, very cleverly. 
because it seems to me, it seems to me that anything Ruiz catches him with, and he hasn't hit him clean since he dropped him at the end of the third round, he's hurting him with. And I think if he, if he, I still think now Ruiz can take him out if he catches him. Ruiz is going to get a lot, a lot more tired, far much, much more, more exhausted for Joshua to take him out. But I believe he can, I believe he can take Joshua. I, I think out. he has to keep doing what he's doing here and moving and, and taking his time for the next couple of rounds. Ruiz, at some point, he's got a gas. Look at the shape of him. Joshua just needs to stay calm and keep relaxed and keep doing what he's doing. Not only is it about his shape, it's the fact that Andy Joshua's had 12, probably 14 weeks to train for this fight, whereas Andy Ruiz only found out he was fighting six weeks ago. So the bell sounds and they move into round number six, moving towards the halfway stage of the contest. Will we get to the halfway stage? I've got it dead level. A sharp jab from Ruiz, but then a solid one from Joshua is the reply. Then a left hook from Joshua. He tries to open up, but leaves himself exposed to shorter, sharper punches from Ruiz. Ruiz ducks under the latest attack from Joshua. But Joshua has started this sixth round with real determination on the front foot rather than stepping back. Now he does, though, to the centre of the ring and allows Ruiz into that space once held by Joshua himself. Ruiz circling in the centre of the ring, swaying from the waist. He does look to have slowed down in terms of work rate. Overhand right from Joshua misses, then he flicks out a jab. That just grazes the chin of the man from Imperial Valley, California, right on the Mexican border. Joshua rolling the gloves in the centre of the ring. A signal that maybe some of the confidence is coming back, but he's just left himself open to a left hook from Ruiz. Then a right hand from the Mexican-American is easily avoided by Joshua, who steps back out of range and might, been might have been able to take advantage of that if he was feeling a bit sharper and hadn't been so badly damaged in the third round by two knockdowns. The one at the end of the round really could have ended the contest. He was in desperate trouble. Gradually now, working his way back into the contest, I've got it dead level. Simultaneously, they throw jabs, each of the heads rocks back here at Madison Square Garden. We're at the halfway stage of round number six of a scheduled 12. Jab to the body from Joshua. Then an overhand right from Ruiz gets through. Joshua's next shot is a left hook gets through. Then they're in an untidy tangle in the centre of the ring. Ruiz pounding away at the body of Joshua, but the referee, Mike Griffin, steps in to separate them. Joshua still on that back foot, content to let Ruiz come forward and to try to catch him with some kind of counter punch or with a strong lead off shot from the right hand or the left hook Ruiz again on the inside with a right hand and then attempted to throw a left hook but Joshua claimed him in close and didn't give him the punching room to get that shot off now a left hook from Joshua again they're working away on the inside Ruiz finds the room with his shorter arms for a left hand towards the body jab from Joshua lands on the chin of Ruiz who takes it and comes forward with a couple of body shots of his own right hand left hook from Ruiz best punches of this round so far then a jab to the torso forces Joshua back Joshua just pokes out his tongue takes a jab from Ruiz this could be a pivotal attack from Ruiz here in the last half a minute of round number six here if Ruiz really feels he can do something special here it might be a gamble because it might leave him with very little left. Right hand to the body from Ruiz. Then a jab to the chin. Lands on the jaw of Joshua. Joshua isn't responding. He ducks under a left hook, but then virtually falls into Ruiz. Last few seconds of the round. Joshua is so, so tired. He's talking to Ruiz. It's hard to decipher what he's trying to say here, but he's had another troubling round here. He throws a weak-looking left hook. A jab to the torso. Again forces Joshua back. End of round six. David Hay. A two up the jab to the body from Andy Ruiz. He's, I've never seen someone set about Andy Joshua's body. Now, the last time I saw that was Dylan White and he had great success with it. Maybe Andy Ruiz has watched that tape, realised that Andy Joshua, although his body seems to look rock solid, I've never seen anyone attack it. And he's doing that and he, and he seems to be slowing Andy Joshua's legs down. The spring in his legs, in and out of range, has slowed down. He's wobbling around the ring. It's he looks unsteady. It's absolutely gone. For the first 30 seconds of that round, I thought Joshua had maybe recaptured a bit of pace. But that, has, that vanished in the last minute or so, Carl. It, it, quite, it's quite scary in the last 30 seconds of that round. He was jabbing to the body pretty well, but with a straight right hand that landed just in this blue corner here. And it hurt him bad. That was the shot there, we're just seeing it on the TV screen. That was a great shot. And Joshua had to walk the rest of the round. He went walk, he's after it. Carl, David and Steve, we're heading into the second half of the fight now. At the end of the next round, if we get that far, I must get your scores. I've got Ruiz leading by a single point at this stage. It's been difficult 
to keep tally of the scores because of that third round when there were three knockdowns. Two for Ruiz and Joshua knocked down the Mexican himself. Joshua goes to the body with another one of those jabs. Will Ruiz continue to concentrate on the torso area, the body area of Anthony Joshua? An exchange of left hooks, overhand right from Ruiz. Ruiz mounts another attack. Joshua in trouble and Joshua goes down for the third time in the contest. In the seventh round, he's up almost immediately. The referee gets to six and to seven and to the mandatory eight. He has a good look at Joshua, but there are two minutes and 15 seconds to go in round number seven. Are we about to witness one of the great heavyweight upsets? Joshua tries a couple of left hooks. He's still fighting back. And now Ruiz opens up a left hook, a right hand. And Joshua goes down again for the second time in a round. Joshua is looking like a beaten man. He's listening to the count. The referee reaches the mandatory eight. Joshua spits out the gum shield. He won't be allowed to continue without the gum shield being replaced. The referee's talking to him over in the corner. Such drama here. And absolutely everybody at ringside on their feet. And the referee has waved it off. We have seen one of the most sensational upsets in the history of Madison Square Garden, in the history of heavyweight boxing. Anthony Joshua has been stopped by Andy Ruiz Jr. in the seventh round. All the talk of Deontay Wilder, of Tyson Fury can be silenced. Andy Ruiz has just thrown a grenade into the heavyweight landscape. The boy who was bullied at school, who was laughed at at the final press conference, they will be laughing no more. Andy Ruiz Jr. on a quite unforgettable night here becomes Mexico's first world heavyweight champion taking in the celebrations as Anthony Joshua stands disconsolate in the corner on the far side of the ring beaten for the first time in his professional career he is no longer the world heavyweight champion what a night what a fight and he's up there smiling Joshua I'm not quite sure why he's smiling Mike dropped twice in that round both times cuffed and went down on his knees spat his gum shield out the last time got up and walked back to the corner disconsolately and we were angry here because we're fair Carl's fair David's fair I'm fair you're fair we were screaming at the referee thinking he was giving Joshua a 10 or 15 second break he wasn't what the referee was doing experienced referee was looking in his eyes and when he looked in those eyes he saw a man that did not want to continue he did not want to fight on there he has been beaten tonight, but I'll tell you what, and I've said it now, we've been saying it all week, he went into this fight with a cold, that's not an excuse, that's a fact, that's what we're going to hear in the aftermath, David. I was, I, I, I'm sh completely shocked, it's my very foundation, I've never, never seen such a, you know, such a, such an upset, you know, in the flesh, and uh, what was a surprise to me was the fact that Anthony leant against the ropes, and, and he wasn't, you know, you know when the referee's counting, you you put your hands up and you come forward. You know, you don't. I know he did. It just it's like he didn't want to continue fighting. And I, I know I was. I'd never expect to see that. You know, maybe there was some confusion of some description, but it looked like he he just he, he wasn't trying to walk back to the fight. You know, I've been in situations where I've been hit down heavy. I've been knocked down. You get up and you say to the referee, "Yes, I want to continue." You look at the referee in his eyes and say, I want to continue, yes, let's go. He, he didn't appear to do that. He seemed to just switch off. It was I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing there. That was that was insane, absolute madness. I never expected that in a million years. But what Josh had done in the corner was bizarre. I think that he thought that the referee was just going to do what he wanted him to do. You know, I, I'm Anthony Josh, I'm the big name. Give me a little bit I'm of a rest. Little break. But it, it was bizarre, completely bizarre. Because Carly didn't scream the place down. Once it was clear the referee was going to stop it, if Joshua thought he was just waiting for his gum shield to be complain, lost, he would have gone ballistic because he's a proud man. He was a broken man in that round. He spits the gum shield out now. We're watching it on the screen here that they don't have just on the radar. Look at him now. We're, we're watching it now. He's walking back to the corner, what turns his back on the referee. You, you're very, you don't turn your back on the referee. The ref's telling him to turn round. He's, he's looking at him. Look at, come on, come on, the ref's saying, come on. Pulling him out. He looks again. No, and he goes back. 
Joshua goes back against the ropes. What's the ref yeah, going to do? Yeah. He tells him to fight on. He goes back to the ropes, I David. He's got no one. I can't believe I've just seen that. I can't believe that. I tell you, just to back up your pool story, I sat down with Joshua for a brief few minutes earlier on in the week. He had a sty in his eye. And I said to the people around me, Josh has got to stay in the eye. Is that a sign of being rubbed down? And they said yes. Referee Michael Griffin steps in and calls a halt to the contest. The official time, one minute, 27 seconds. Round number seven, the winner by TKO victory. And now the new unified IBO, IBF, WBA, WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Andy Destroyer Cruz Jr. So a crushing defeat, the first of his professional career for Anthony Joshua on the night he thought would be the start of the new phase of his career, leaving his memory at Madison Square Garden. To be fair to Joshua, he is smiling and congratulating Andy Ruiz Jr in the center of the ring. Some of the odds layers here in New York were offering odds of 30 to one against Andy Ruiz Jr. He has made nonsense of those odds and he has taken the title here in one of the great upsets in the history of boxing and the heavyweight division. Our you guests know? here tonight on this amazing night at Madison Square Garden, Carl Frampton and David Hay, both two weight world champions both shaking their heads, can't believe what they've seen. We're dumbstruck with the outcome there, Mike. And I'm, I'm dumbstruck with these celebrations, with the love what, I'm seeing in the but what, we, what we all can't do is, is take away the credit from a man, Andy Ruiz Absolutely. Jr., who took this fight on only six weeks' notice. You had some of the biggest names in the division turn this fight down on such notice. You know, um, uh, Louis, uh, Louis Ortiz turned down ridiculous money, six million to take this fight. Andy Ruiz took the fight and came out here with a fantastic game plan. He stu stood there his ground, took his licks like a man, and and won the fight legitimately. There were no fouls. It was just clean punching. He knocked, and it wasn't a one-punch knockout. It wasn't like it. anyone could win. It wasn't like Oliver McCall or Hassim Rackman when he knocked out Lennox Lewis. He systematically broke the down Anthony Joshua and beat him up. There's obviously a rematch clause in this. I don't know how much Andy Ruiz got paid. He must maybe four or five million dollars. There must be a rematch clause, but he'll get the rematch. He'll make an absolute fortune. Let's have a listen. Let's not have a listen, Mike. Sorry about that. Mike, I know one thing, and, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to make this. I don't want to trivialise what we've just seen here because it was quite brilliant, quite exceptional, quite stunning, quite amazing, even for old veterans like me. But at least we know where we're going in September. <laughs> at least we know where we'll be in September, boys. But also, it's one of those lessons, isn't it, about fights that are mentioned and negotiated and, and there's talk on both sides, whether it's social media or whatever. And now we have a very different landscape for Joshua against Fury, Joshua against Deontay Wilder. And, and these are the fights that we wanted to see happen. I mean, we've, we've seen drama that we might not have seen in any of those fights, but it just now creates a very different picture around those fights. Massively, and maybe they'll start to happen now. They, we were all talking about them waiting one fight too long and someone getting beaten in the process. We never thought it would be the Andy Ruiz fight. We always thought maybe Victor or Lewis Ortiz, um, not swore to Fury's fight next. You don't imagine them fights that uh, the, the fighters to lose against these type of opposition. But this is what happens when you don't take the fights. Now, nah, hopefully, the fight these fights happen. You know what? Let, let's say let's say Wilder agrees to fight uh, Joshua in September because Ortiz pulls out. They'll still make the same. They'll still make good money, Carl. But it's not the same fight. And Eddie Hearn all week. Eddie Hearn, who's a great showman, he's a great salesman. Let's get away. He's a great promoter, and I really mean that. All week long, he kept saying, "One one loss ruins everything. One loss changes the entire landscape." We have to have a Ruiz rematch here. Although, of course, Ruiz is looked after by Al Heyman. For all we know, oh. we might have Ortiz pull out, and it's Ruiz against Wilder in September, David. Yeah, just remember, if you if this was Andy Ruiz on, on, on six weeks' notice, how's he going to be on 12 weeks' notice, on 14 weeks' notice, when he's had a full sparring a full sparring camp when he's had a full training camp he's only going to be better next time now he's got the confidence has he got into Anthony Joshua's head will Anthony Joshua want the rematch well that's no listen even if Anthony Joshua was absolutely cream cracked and exhausted at the end when that fight finished in the seventh 
he still was cautious in the fourth, the fifth and the sixth after that third round bludgeoning. And I, know, I hope Mike, who's gone up to the ring, gets hold of, of Joshua, because I still can't work out, Carl, why you, you've lost and I've seen you. You're, you're, let me tell you something, you two are two of the worst losers I've ever known. And that's a compliment. What's wrong with him? Why isn't he, why isn't he kicking off? I, I don't so, like... so shocked. You talk about people being good losers and stuff. It's nice to be gracious in the feet and shake someone's hand, but it's a little bit too nice for this for me. If you lose a fight, you should be absolutely heartbroken. You should be raging with yourself. You should be absolutely gutted. And I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing it either, David. I know, what, I, I, know my, I know, I know Carl, I know myself. I, I know when I'm in the ring, I go into the ring, I'm willing to die in the ring. I, I'm sure you have to... You've only got to watch my fights over the years to know I'm willing to, you know, go out. <laughs> I know you, I, I'd rather get stretched out than not continue. And uh, I know, uh, it, it, it looks, sorry, David, it looks now, and, and listen, I, and, I, and I share your, your, your sense of confusion. Joshua is finally going to be doing Sky up in the ring, Andy Scott's up in the ring. Let's hope, let's hope that Mike gets him because I want to get a, and I've known Joshua for nine or 10 years, I want to get a handle on what this is all about because I can't work it out, Carl. Because it's not, listen, you, you're a big boy, you lose a close decision, you know, you deal with it. You know, you, you, you had what you had life and death with, with, with Warrington. You weren't celebrating at the end, but at the same time, you understand what's going on. I can't see it. I just don't know what's going on. Here. People talk about bad losers and stuff, and, and especially you talk about it when there's kids, the kids throwing a tantrum. I like to see that because it means they wanted to win. This is, this is a completely bizarre scenario. There's too much smells here for me. And, and let's not forget, those knockdowns came in the third round. First of all, uh, first of all, he gets he gets caught square where he goes down from a really powerful left hook. Every single ounce of Joshua's being put in there. He got up her and he then just said, you know what? Damn it, I'm gonna go. And he caught and hurt Joshua, dropped him. He hurt him at the end of the third. Joshua survived the next few rounds and then he was caught in that round. But the round before, he looks absolutely gone. That was when both you and David highlighted the body shots. Yeah. So he wasn't right. What we actually saw by the time it came wasn't a shot. That 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 performance. From Andy Reeves, it was a complete like it was a, a not a master class as such, but the way he went about it, he was dropped, he got up, he knocked Joshua down, and then he went to his body, he targeted his body specifically. And Joshua, as you've seen, was tired, he was so tired at the end. And the knockout, it was almost like it was it was gonna come. And Dave, you know, just to go back because people might just be listening to this or they might be scrambling to try and find find it to watch it. Just to go back, the referee was left with absolutely no yeah. option. The referee the gave him the more than a benefit of the doubt. More. The referee, what the referee should have done is count to eight. He gets to his feet, wipe his gloves, and waving Andy Ruiz back into the action. But Andy, but Andy Joshua wasn't ready to fight. He was leaning. He had both his arms on the ropes. The the ropes are holding him up at that stage. And at some at one point there, Carl Michael Griffin, the referee, quite illegally, I'm sure. And in fact, if I'm in Ruiz is called, I'm, I'm, I'm going mad. He actually grabs Joshua by the shorts and was, tries to was, pull him back he was into given, the fight. He was given as, as much chances as he could have. There was a point in the, in the round where, where Joshua was dropped twice. If that was, about if that was Andy Ruiz who was dropped twice, the fight was over. Absolutely, it was over. And you're absolutely right, Dave. We need to give this guy a, a, a guy that has been dismissed this, so often. Is Mike is getting really close up there. I, I think we just we might just get to Joshua here. It's, it's, we, we have Mike, Mike's with Joshua now. Anthony, a sensational night that went wrong. For you, where did it go yeah. wrong? Where did it go wrong? Um, I'll watch it back, but it's just getting involved a bit, do you know what I mean? And taking some clean shots. But well, what a fucking fight. Sorry about my language. What a bloody fight. Um, congratulations to him. You said you wanted to be involved in a Ron Lyle George Foreman fight. I'll grab you here for a second, Anthony. Um, excuse me. Okay, we're being forced away, and I'm going. We're being forced away. You don't own it. So. Okay, we got uh, we got pushed away there. Uh, one of the other companies that's already interviewed him. I've decided to do another interview because I believe their first interview wasn't that good. Girl who showed it up, mate. I had a run up with her in Boston. She's yeah, not a, she's not a nice lady. Yeah, no, the, the, you're right. There's a floor manager in the ring, and she's quite infamous, actually. She's been around a long time, and she's given Mike some stick. But Jack, the producer, has calmed. He's cal is calming, is, is calming Mike down. Mike will go back and he will get a second shot. Don't worry about that. Meanwhile, mean, mean, meanwhile, 
there is chaos here and there's also a really bizarre sense of feeling because because the fans are over for a good time had that been in the uk there might have been some booing and nastiness but here they just they're, they're as stunned as us three let's not mince our words yeah everyone's stunned the whole the whole world is stunned i'd love to have been if i was sitting on my couch watching this i'd be absolutely gobsmacked I'm sitting Te here. Texting everybody, waking everybody up. Of course, I'm 10 yards from a ring. I, I, I honestly can't believe what I've seen. How do you how do you compare that and in the list of all time great upsets? Well, I'll be up there. Oh no! Hey, hey, listen, there might be something above it, but I can't instantly think of what it is. Tyson against Buster Douglas, possibly, and of course that was a fight where all of the outside circumstances came to the surface after the fight. What do we make? Well, not the swear word, but what do we make of Josh? The one thing he did say, we did say, I got involved. What a effing fight. Now, again, that's as confusing as what we've seen. Was he, was he celebrating the fact that he was in an, an he, up and yeah, down of what you've got to realize, What you've got to realise, he's taken a hell of a lot of big shots in there. He's concussed. You know, I've, 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 I've had interviews after fights and I've watched them back on tape and I've known that's not quite been me speaking. And I'm pretty sure he got dropped heavily it, five, five times in, in one fight. No, four, five four, times. Four, 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 four times, times in one heavily. fight. Four times yeah. in one fight and He's exhausted, I body shot. can go to Mike now. Mike's now with Eddie. Eddie, your thoughts, mate? Just uh, shocked, you know. I think uh, just speaking to Sky there, I was like, I don't think it sunk into anyone. But we knew it was a possibility. We knew Ruiz could fight. AJ got badly sloppy. Third round was a beautiful combination. And it looked like Ruiz was finished, done. And he got sloppy. He came in trading. He got hit on the top of the head. And he never really recovered. Um, there was times in the fifth and sixth round that I felt like he did recover. Um, and then, you know, again, got caught and just seemed to run out of gas. He didn't seem himself, but tonight belongs to Andy Ruiz. It goes down as one of those big, big upsets in heavyweight history. And there's always that danger. But now it's about rebuilding. You know, it's about seeing what he's made of. And I know what he's made of. And I know how much this will hurt him. This will devastate him. And he will rebuild and he will come back. He didn't want to give in. He didn't know where he was at the end. And, um, you know, like I said, Andy Ruiz is a lovely guy. He deserves it. He's the new heavyweight champion of the world. And now it's down to the rematch. And winning that fight in November, December, to bring that back to the UK. And he must win that fight. You know, there's no other crack after that. He must win that fight. And he'll do everything he can to regain his title. We noticed towards the end of the week, Eddie, a sky above the right eye of Anthony Joshua. It was all fitting yeah. well with him on the way in? All was fine. I mean, he had a sty in his eye. Didn't affect his vision, didn't affect his training. Uh, no. We were just wondering whether it was no. a sign of something else. No, I mean, you know, was he under stress? Yeah, probably. But new environment, you know, I, honestly, Mike, I can't tell you something went wrong in cam, something went right. He was fine. Obviously, it was a new environment. That was always the risk here. But he should be, in I think most people's opinion, be beating Andy Ruiz. Tonight, Maybe in the one or two times out of ten that Andy Ruiz wins that fight, he done it. And listen, congratulations to him, Mexico's first ever world heavyweight champion. And now we have to go back, rebuild, and try and win a rematch. It's, it's all or nothing now. So we're looking at November, December, you say? Yep, yep. That's, uh, and by the way, Andy Ruiz will fancy this rematch. You know, he will believe that he can beat AJ again. He took the fight at reasonably short notice, and the pressure's on now. I mean, you know, you lose that rematch, there's no coming back from, you know, the world championships. There's rebuilding, but to get back to the heights that he's been, he must win that rematch. And, um, you know, again, it's just, I'm shocked, you're shocked, everybody's shocked, but it's it's reality. We've got to swallow it, suffer it, and come back. It's all you can do, and I know he'll bounce back. You know, he gives everything to this sport, and uh, he will do everything he can to try and win that rematch. Thanks as ever for your time, mate. Thanks. Mike there with Eddie Hearn. We're still trying to get to uh, Anthony Joshua. He's been uh, taken away. I think there's some medical personnel surrounding him and a, an equally disconsolate group of his handlers and his minders. I hope we do get to him because I, I take on board what you say, David, that he's probably a little bit, you know, he's a bit concussed and Eddie was saying doesn't know where he is, but he's walking away there like he's pulled off a great shot win not like he's been the victim of a great shot loss it's a it's a bizarre it's a bizarre evening that nobody anticipated I, nobody expected 
And um, you know, Andy Ruiz is the new number one in the division. He beat the man with the most belts. He We've got ourselves Martin. a Mexican heavyweight champion. I'll tell you what the reaction might be down to. Anthony Joshua is such a program commercial guy and he's never had to face anything like this in his life. Even against Klitschko, where he had to get up off the deck, he got up and won big celebrations, but he's just been beat. He, do he doesn't know how to react to it. Yeah, and also when he got when he got dropped by Klitschko in that round, he went back to the corner and he said to Robert McCracken, it's okay, I'm going to take a couple of rounds off. And McCracken was shocked. And if you actually watch the fight back, he does take a couple of rounds off. They aren't desperate rounds. And I would argue, I would, I would suggest to you two, but those two round, those two or three rounds after that mad third, they were desperate rounds. They were survival rounds and not nice survival rounds. There was a point where he tried to take a round off and Andy Ruiz targeted the body and then he really had to take a round off and it looked like he was, you could physically see he was, he was becoming exhausted. Yeah, the round off that he, he, he tried to take a round off, but Andy Ruiz um, exclusively aimed at his body and landed maybe six or seven clean shots to the abdomen and that really does sap your your strength saps your energy stores and uh, so when Anthony needed to step up the gears there was nothing left in the tank you had it punched out of him my, no, I was sorry, saying my, early on whether I thought Ruiz might start to tire after three or four rounds but something he said to me during the week stuck with me that he's never in his professional career had two back-to-back -back camps and he got this call towards the end of the previous camp for the fight he had on April the 20th. So he told me he had literally a couple of days off and then back in the gym. And, and, and what, again, what he said to me was he's actually had a 15-week camp with a fight in the middle against a man who's exactly the same size and shape as Joshua. Now, I don't want to sort of claim to be after timers here, but if you're going to pull off a shock, that's a perfect set of you talk about perfect fate. storm. You talk about fate and things happening for a reason. That, that's Everything just seemed to fall into place there for, for Andy Ruiz. And we look at what happened tonight. This shock, the biggest shock I've ever seen in my whole days in boxing. That's that's a, unbelievable. And I'm live here. I can't believe it. M Mike, can I, can I just ask you this, Mike? I know you only got him for a minute before he was wrenched from you and he gave you, he gave you an answer, but I'm not asking about his words. I'm asking about his demeanour. You know what I mean. I've known you a long while. What did he look like up close? Vacant. Yeah. I thought so. Well done. And, 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 and that, was how, that was how he came across and Eddie, put, and Eddie said to you, he had no idea where he was. And you could tell by the kind of, if you can call it a conversation, what was unfolding between him and the referee. It, it was as if... And then he suddenly, as the referee started waving, he suddenly leant in as if to say, oh, were you asking me the question? Yeah. His, in, his instinct strangely didn't seem to fight. Sometimes, for, some, for instance, when I've been hit on the button and I'm buzzing, my instinct is doing, okay, let's just start swinging. That was my, my natural instinct. His instinct didn't seem to be that. It was to, I don't know, walk to the corner and stay it, in the corner. What, what it, I like, I like the honesty from Matty Hearn after in that interview. He says that, Joshua must win the rematch and he must where does he go if he doesn't if he if he doesn't beat Andy, Andy Ruiz where does he go yeah uh, uh, and, and, and and the other thing to, to be perfectly honest with you what he reminded me of when he went back to his corner there so nonchalantly after that second drop down knockdown whatever you want to call it in that round that looked like sparring yeah. that looked like yeah. sparring I've been here, I've been hurt, I spit my gum shoot out, I go back in the corner I put my arms up I take a few breaths that looked like a man who had been hurt, whacked, caught in a sparring ring and just wandered back to the corner, Dave. I, I, I wanted to see more desperation. I wanted to see someone who realised my whole career is on the line here. I've got this is the biggest fight in my life. It's, 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 my, it's my American debut. I need to go out, to just go out swinging. I've got a, you know, I've come, I've, I've been on, I've been on a deck four times. Let me go. Let me convince the referee to let me at this little guy. The, the backlash from this is going to be absolutely Phenomenal. massive. And he's going to have to be able to be mentally strong enough to deal with that. He's going to get so much stick by other boxers, but uh, um, social media and stuff. But watch Big Fury and watch Wilder go in. They're going to give him dog's abuse. And, and absolutely, so they should, because that's the business. You know, you, you use that tool. You live, and, you live and die on social media. You use it when you need to, to put plugs to get your little bits up so you can sell the products you're endorsing and making millions. And equally, you should take it as a big boy when you start getting abuse. I don't mean the rancid abuse that's often got a racist tone to it in some form or sexist tone in some sort of shape. I'm talking about those big, those two big guys have got every right to stick the boot in. Because you know what? 
if if that if Wilder was fighting Ruiz tonight, and if Fury was fighting Ruiz tonight, and he went down four times and was stopped on his feet. Joshua and Joshua's people, they'd be sticking that gilt edge dagger straight in under the ribcage. But one thing you got to remember as well, Andrews got in the ring, whereas the, the, well other done, two, the other two didn't. How gutted are both Fury and Wilder going to be after seeing that thing? And that could have been me. I could have been walking out there with these belts. If Andy Ruiz, a six foot, you know, completely obese guy, could knock out of Joshua. I would have had a great chance of doing it. And I think they're going to kick themselves because they, they forfeited by far probably uh, times five their biggest purse of their lives. Can, can, I, can I just throw this at you, Carl? Um, uh, if there was nothing wrong and if the star isn't connected to him being run down and if there isn't an ongoing cold, then tonight that was a really bad performance by Joshua when under pressure. That reeks of a man being backed up, of a bully being found out, unless there's some reasons, like he hurt his right hand or dislocated it, it something. Was, so Mike asked the question there, Eddie, and he, and he refused it completely. He said he was in the shape of his life and it was just an under-par performance. And, and if that's the case, it was a very under-par performance. And it might have been the fact that Andy Ruiz, once he got dropped, he just fired back. This is something that Josh is... I've knocked someone. Josh expects when he knocks people over, normally, that's it, game over, it's only going one way. This kid get up and put him down 30 seconds later. And as David said during the fight, responded in a way that Vladimir Klitschko didn't and maybe couldn't because he was 40 years of age. Yeah, uh, Vlad Vladimir Klitschko didn't have the legs. He was, was he 40 years of age when, it, when that fight happened? He, um, Anthony Joshua was fighting someone tonight the same age as him. You know, the guy obviously doesn't look after himself physically, but the guy's young, he's got no miles on the clock, he's had no abuse. As I said, that was the first time he'd ever been knocked down. And how did he respond to the first time of him getting knocked down? Here, Ten seconds later, he puts down Anthony Joshua. Here's one for you. Could Andy Ruiz make cruiserweight if he lost some beef? 100%. I uh, believe 100% is good. Yeah. And also, you know, we're talking about... Sorry, Mike, I kind of cross you there. I know we're talking about uh, Vladimir Klitschko not putting his foot down and not chasing and not trying to take advantage of Joshua. And we're saying that Ruiz did. But what Ruiz really did was when he got up, OK, and he was OK, he was say his feet were square when he got caught. When Ruiz got up, he said, this is when I'm going to do what I've promised to do. This is when I'm going to do what I've been telling everybody since, well, for the last two or three weeks, five weeks. I'm going to do now exactly what I promised you I'm going to do. I'm going to dig my fat little feet in this, this soft canvas, and I'm going to swing like my life depends on it. And if I catch him, I know I can hurt him. He told us this at sunset on Monday on a lovely balcony on the 25th floor, not six or seven blocks from here. Carl, he looked me in the eye and told me, if I get hurt, I'll hurt him. I'll get to him. He said it. We dismissed it. We didn't want to believe it. No one believed it. And and look, he was relaxed the whole week. There was no pressure on him. But Joshua was relaxed. When Joshua walked the ring tonight, that was the first time I seen a wee bit of anger in his face. And I was like, whoa, Josh is up for it here. He's going he's gonna to put in a performance. But the performance came from Andy Ruiz. And you were talking about there the possibility of him going down to cruiserweight. But when we're talking about bodies here and the laughter that was around on social media and elsewhere... Is it Anthony's Joshua? Is it Anthony Joshua's body that's not fit for purpose? Is he just Good too question. stiff? No, no, he, no. Anthony Joshua started boxing um, a lot later than a lot of other fighters. He started in his late teens. He was like 18 years of age. Most boxers, world-class boxers, start a lot earlier. I know um, Deontay Wilder also started late, but and but Wilder and Anthony Joshua aren't. I don't know. They don't. They they they're athletes who happen to do boxing. Whereas, you know, uh, Andy Riz Jr., he's a boxer. You know, you see he's slipping the punches, he's riding the punches. When he got hurt, his instinct was to keep punching. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, I don't know. Andy Joshua's designed to do any sport. Look at him, he could do shot foot, he could be a 100-meter sprinter, 1500. He can do any sport. He's just a natural athlete. There's, Mate, always, there's always been a concern about his engine. There's always, and right through his whole career, and they keep talking about it. But tonight, it was proved that he, he gasped and if they're saying that there was no illness and the sty wasn't related to a cold or a flu then 
The engine's definitely a concern. If, if he thinks it was Savage in there tonight, I can assure you, I can assure you, he's going to get a mauling, not from not just from the social media and one or two of the British press who perhaps feel they don't have the access they should get, but he's going to get a real mauling from the Americans that came out and from the Americans coming in because they were promised the second coming. They were promised a man that was going to transform boxing in America and they've seen that man battered by an overweight nice guy from down on the Mexican border one the one thing that really really sticks with me is I remember the first time Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas his air of invincibility um, dissipated and everybody then truly believed all they've got to do is just get past the initial onslaught and they've got a shot Anthony Joshua is, uh, is invincible. He is gone now. He's he's a mere mortal. He wasn't mortal before. We saw him get knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko, and we thought that's it. And then he comes back and wins. He then fights Povetkin. He knocks him out. He just keeps winning. He's lost his invincibility now, and everybody is going to be trying that little bit harder. In the past, when people started losing, they realized, okay, it's my time to check out now. Now they just got to hang in there, keep swinging, throw the body shots. And he's gonna he, he's gonna really need to step his game up if he's gonna want to continue for the success he's had up until this point. I remember a lovely line from Buster Douglas on one of the anniversaries of that fight when he was interviewed, and he said when he was asked how come he was so different to anybody before that, why was he the first to to burst the balloon? And he said everyone else had fought Tyson with one foot in the ring and one foot out, and that's going back to what you're saying. But but, it, but he also, and I'm not taking anything away from Buster, he's a lovely man and he's battled all sorts of stuff including a, a, a food coma uh, but there were factors that 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 Tyson that got in the ring wasn't even a half decent Tyson and, 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 I'm, I'm not, and I'm trying not to take anything away but what we're hearing tonight what we're hearing tonight is that that was a decent Joshua well we've had some uh, response on social media you were talking about the backlash that he can expect this is from Tyson Fury might surprise some we have our back and forths but Anthony Joshua changed his stars through life. Heavyweight boxing, these things can happen. Rest up, recover, regroup, and come again. And Frank Bruno responded to that by saying, well said. So, seems as though within the game... We didn't hear what he says be... tomorrow, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, 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 I tell you what, that from Fury... You know, here's a man, Fury, that can wrong foot us and has wrong footed us several times in the last five or six years, and he's just done it again yeah, tonight. Because I would have had the $5 in my pocket, hands on. He would have been the first in. And then he's gone and done something. Just one Fury, even more friends come. It was good. It was clever. But there, it's going to come, Steve. You know it's going to come. Well, Tyson Fury fights in a couple of weeks' time in Las Vegas against the German Thomas Schwartz, who's ranked lower than Andy Ruiz. But Ruiz against Joshua now, the rematch, I mean, it's, it's going to be one of the biggest sporting events of the year in the UK. It's going to be absolutely huge. And again, like Eddie Hearn said, a, a must win for Anthony Joshua. But as David pointed out, we all know the tactics now. Like, Any time you're going to do a fight with Anthony Joshua, it's to get him kind of after four rounds, five rounds, six rounds, possibly the second half of the fight because there's big questions about his engine. Target the body. Target the body, as he done so well tonight. And let your hands go. I mean, you know, listen, we're, I'm not saying we predicted a, a seventh round stoppage for Andy Ruiz, but we did try and paint a picture of how dangerous Ruiz could be. And the fact, and we've said this, we've used a line from an old, about Tony Galento. You know, the fat guy that fought Joe Louis, the famous yeah. guy, is two-ton Tony Galento. He was, he, honestly, Carl, no disrespect to you, he was your size, and he was 15 and a half stone. And he used to throw, he dropped Joe Louis in the first round, got smashed to bits in the next four or five. And and I said, we're going to see a, we're going to see a total Tony Galenta performance from Andy Ruiz, it, 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 it'll go down, but it'll go down swinging. And that's what he did, because had he been hit on the chin when he got up in the third round, that would have been, I think, that was maybe what some of us expected. What we didn't expect was, and I'm going to introduce this word, capitulation, Mike. That was a capitulation by, by, by Joshua over a four or five round period. And that ending, uh, uh, you know... He's not going to be able to get away with saying, and I, and, I, and, I'm, and I mean this, and I'm probably going to lose him as a friend. He's not going to be able to get away with saying, what a great fight that was. Everyone got entertained. That's not good enough. There's something as well we were talking about in the build-up where he was doing some work with Navy SEALs about how they react to crisis situations and how he might react to a knockdown. But is there anything, I mean, you, you've both been there, is there anything that can relate so closely to a sport like this that makes that kind of 
that kind of background work in any way relevant? I don't think so. You need you need to be sparring. You need to be in them situations and, and actually feel what it's like to be hit. And sparring good, good opposition, good sparring partners, different sparring partners, getting in round after round. I don't, I don't really see the point in having a Navy SEAL guy in with you. Maybe it's some sort of sports psychology theory behind it. I'm not sure. Which sports psychology, by the way, is very beneficial at times, but I'm not I'm not too sure about the Navy SEAL stuff. I remember when um, Adam Booth was telling me, David, about how you used to roll around on the canvas to make yeah, I yourself. Start, what busy, I used to do a, a kind of a before I fought um, Jean Marc Mormek for the for the cruiserweight title, I was fully aware that the style that he had didn't usually gel with my style. A short guy who comes into range, lets his hands go, and and's got plenty of power was that was the style that was going to potentially bother me. So what I did, I replicated what it's like to get hit on the chin. So I do roly polies all around the chin spin around and around and around and then do pad work so my head's spinning and c come fight night I got knocked perfect. down perfect it worked out perfect I remember getting knocked down and the first thing I think, thought was thank god I've practiced this because my head's spinning all over the place and I'm not panicking because I've done and it and you did a roll again. We, yeah I did it I <laughs> did a roll we used to do it as got amateurs our, yeah. uh, the Russian coach Zar Antia who was the Irish high performance coach used to make us do it at the end of every training session roly polies roll up and down spin around in circles look at one spot keep spinning and then shadow box for 30 seconds just to feel what it was like. It's good. The, the, re the reason why I did it is because I realized I don't have, I've never had the greatest chin in the world, you know, and being honest about your own uh, shortcomings is a beneficial trait to have because I, if, I, if I'd have thought, now I'm not going to get knocked down, I'm not going to get hit, I'm too quick, I would have been shocked, but I was aware of my frailties and built a style around that. Maybe Anthony Joshua needs to do the same thing. I'm not sure if he practiced getting knocked down before this last fight. I think if someone, if one of his coach said, right then, let's practice you getting knocked down, he might have thought, are you winding me up? Why would I practice getting knocked down? I'm Anthony Joshua. Have you seen the guy I'm fighting? This little fat guy, he's not gonna be able to knock me down. But now he's gonna need to start re addressing how he's been training, what he's been doing, how he's been living, who he's been sparring with. How tough has his sparring been? I don't know. I've never, I haven't heard of any of his sparring partners. Do you know who he's been sparring with? Well, generally, it's the amateur group. It was Joe Joyce for a million he, he, years, he, Fraser Clark. He, Fraser Clark be, came he over doesn't this need amateurs. He doesn't need amateurs. He needs tough, uh, grueling guys who's going to put the heat on him, put the pressure on him, yeah. like this guy did and, tonight. And they do all of their sparring behind not one locked door, but two locked doors, and everybody in there is silent. Like you never hear anything about it, as you're saying here. But perhaps, perhaps it's time for this one before we have another risk and we... And he loses again, and then it's a real crisis for Anthony Joshua, and in some ways for the rest of us, because you know he's he's a big part of our business. You know he's a real big part of our business. Perhaps it's time to get some really dangerous men in camp. Real, I mean, I saw some of your sparring sessions, Dave. You know, Deontay Wilder sparring I, sessions. I, you, so I mean, be, whoa, those are savage. That, that's that's what how I how I saw it is. You need to you need to prepare yourself for the battle at hand. You know, if you're fighting someone dangerous, you need to get dangerous sparring partners. At one stage, I was in with like Deontay Wilder for three rounds. I had Marius Vac for three rounds, Dimitrenko for three rounds. I mean, you just rotate them. And it was hard work. I wanted to make the sparring as, if not more dangerous than the actual fight. So come fight night, it would be a walk in the park. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, my sparring was so hard, I'd actually make it to the fight. <laughs> but if I got, when I got in the ring, I was I was able to adapt to it. Maybe he needs to really step his level of, of position up because he, he looked out of his comfort zone at every stage throughout that fight. He looked out of... He, you would never have thought this guy is pretty much the undisputed heavyweight champion. You'd never think this guy has never lost his... He, 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 Looking at the two of them, it was a very, very bizarre thing it'll, to see live. It'll be really interesting to see if there's any changes made to his team and his close team around him. That'll be an interesting thing. It'll probably unfold over the, over the next sort of few weeks or a few months. But um, it's something that wouldn't surprise me. If, 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 if everybody is correct and he's saying he's healthy, training went well, he wasn't injured, then something, something, something's wrong. Something needs to be adjusted. He needs to improve aspects of his game. And, you know, only Anthony Joshua knows what Anthony Joshua needs. And he needed something in there that he didn't have. OK, we're just about to hand to the news on Five Live. Before we do, before we leave Madison Square Garden shaking our heads tonight, final thoughts, first of all, Carl Frank. I'm just glad they've been here. That was the craziest night of boxing I've ever witnessed. Un unbelievable. David? I thought it was a fantastic night of boxing. Unfortunately, our guy, the Brit, didn't pull it off and he lost his titles to what seemed to be a completely out-conditioned Mexican. 
Um, but this is this is why heavy bo heavyweight boxing is the best the best division and best sport in the world is because anything can happen on any given day and the drama there's no other sport with this type of drama and you know this is why I love boxing so much Callum Smith was punch perfect Katie Taylor Delphine Pursum were in the best women's fight I've ever seen even if I thought the wrong woman won it was great and Anthony Joshua well we knew he's brave we knew he's gutsy we knew he could bang I'm talking about John Ru Andy Ruiz, of course, because he was tonight, Andy Ruiz, quite brilliant. We found a heavyweight hero tonight, Mike. And that's a full stop on an unforgettable night here at the venue known as the Mecca of International Boxing, Madison Square Garden, where Anthony Joshua has lost his three world heavyweight titles. An amazing weekend of sport on Five Live continues tomorrow, where we're live in Liverpool for the Champions League victory parade on air at midday. But now it's time for the latest Five Live news.